10 years ago, I made this lovely piece of Warhammer 40,000 terrain. 10 years old, it's still shedding just a little bit of sand. Isn't that classic? It's not much to look at, but at the time, I was pretty darn proud of it. And I still think it's pretty schnazzy. And actually, Games Workshop agrees with me that it's pretty schnazzy because this is what they assume you're playing your games of 40k on. The important thing is this piece of terrain has a base. We actually made a showcasing video of this and a couple other pieces just like it. Whew, 10 years old, it's a, it's a watch. This sucker is made out of fun foam masonite board and children's craft foam. And you know what? It's fine, it's fine. It looks a little ridiculous with my modern primary space marines in it, but I think it's time to take another look at this piece. And it'll give me a great opportunity to use my saw. I love this saw so much. This is my table saw, and what a saw it is. Arguably extremely overkill for cutting out mace night board, but this saw will give me a great opportunity for texture. I cut out the flooring of my train piece so there will never again be any more confusion on exactly where the edge of the ruin starts. Sean. After my base was cut out, I set the fence of my saw further and further away in one inch increments, running my board through, leaving me with shallow trenches. I did this vertically and horizontally so that when I flip it over, I was left with something that resembles floor tiles. Ah, oh, I love this thing so much. And look at this, it looks just like a candy bar. Just, ah, oh, I wanna eat it. Now it is time to lay the building on top. And oh boy, have we got a building for you guys. These pieces of wall are our newest terrain pack, Gothic Modular Terrain. No more poster board and popsicle sticks for our games. It's kind of a magical feeling that 10 years ago I was cutting up Walmart presentation board and now I have my own professional terrain, but I am dying to see what this looks like I'll put together. I positioned my pieces where they'll end up and then broke out the epoxy. Super glue would work fine, but I know myself and using something a bit more robust will be better. My games of 40k can get pretty heated. I have some popsicle sticks and some disposable mixing surfaces and you know what that means. A fun dog fact. Did you know your dog could be left or right pod? <laughs> how could it possibly matter? And how could they know that? I, ah, these are the best dog facts in the world. This is one minute epoxy. It actually takes a lot longer than one minute. My favorite epoxy is JB Quick Weld, but all they had at the store was one minute. I squished my parts together, making sure the wet epoxy gave a good squish. This is a ruin, so I'll only put walls on one half, and I made a little bit of interior wall. I followed the Games Workshop Leviathan Tournament Companion to get the floor plan, but unlike Games Workshop's terrain, mine has some extra spice. Working windows. Each window has two shutters that lets it be open or closed. I tend to house rule that all buildings with the ground floor are sealed up and every upper floor is open, but now I can do it for real. Also, the windows are little eagles. Look at this! Ah, oh, it is beautiful, grim, gothic birdalism. Birdalism, because they're they're little they're little eagles with the wings for the shutters. Ah, oh, and it's it is the exact shape from Tabletop Simulator. Ah, oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at it! Look at it compared to the old foam. I absolutely love it. But this is enough to make this exact piece. I have a little bit more plastic. I might need to take another trip back to the saw. I love this saw too. This is my scroll saw, one of the greatest hobby tools ever invented. It is a little reciprocating blade that laser beams right through wood, plastic, and resin. I took some full walls and cut them up, turning them into little damaged and broken rubble, perfect for adding some context to my ruin. On the computer, all the terrain is perfect in terms of its shape and size, but it's not much to look at. And that's pretty much what my piece looks like right now. But as I move back into real life, I can add all the detail I want. Reasonably, there would be some evidence of all the missing building. So I used the parts I cut in my scroll saw to add some of that back in, reinforcing the boundary line on the train piece and making it look like an actual bombed out building instead of just the shape of one. I used some strips of cork to be the last remaining chunk of wall. Ruins really should just be a place for infantry, not vehicles. Except the defiler. The defiler gets to go where it wants. Now to blend it all together. If I was painting, I would put on a wash, but for physical crafting, I'm making some rubble. I sprinkled a little piece of cork, some small pebbles, a pinch of sand, and some small scale modeling bricks into the corners and along the edges of my walls. Then I slobbered everything in ultra thin super glue just to lock it in place. You could use wood glue for this, but I am super impatient, so I want to use a product with super in the name. 
And you know it's super that the whole set of buildings is on our Patreon. Our modular gothic buildings were designed with competitive wargaming in mind, with the exact sizes, shapes, and heights wargamers need for high level play. Nick printed our set out of resin and he also printed it in FDM and it looks pretty great in plastic too. This pack comes with instructions for building the Leviathan Tournament Companion Walls. And if you always want to be up to date on what's happening at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. Follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. There is a worrying amount of super glue on here. Okay, almost all of it stayed stuck down. Oh, it looks like something straight out of Dawn of War. Actually, it looks like something straight out of Tabletop Simulator, although the Tabletop Simulator maps don't look this good. And speaking of making it look good, it's time to get a little paint on here. Not a saw, we just have an automatic garage door opener. I hosed down my buildings with some black rattle can primer, covering up all the different materials I used to make this sucker out of, and it gave it a ton of realism. Once it's all black, I hit it from above with a gray spray paint, kind of like a zenithal, but I don't want it to get too bright. I like my terrain on the dark side, so that my models really pop when they're on the tabletop. Ah, oh, with it all gray, it does bear a striking resemblance to the original. It looks like it just leaped from the pages of Tabletop Simulator. Actually, from the pages of the Leviathan Tournament Companion. Ah, oh, there's a hilarious line in the Leviathan Tournament Companion. When using these layouts, players should ensure that they are as close to the illustrated positions as possible. But organizers should avoid mandating precise locations for each piece. Oh, Games Workshop and their rules writing. Like, do exactly as we say. But you know what? Have fun with it. Mix it up a little bit. This piece is a perfect copy of Leviathan Layout 3. It just needs a little bit more paint. And unfortunately, my airbrush is horribly clogged right now because I don't clean it after every use. But Nick does. So, I'm gonna use his. It's all shiny and new. I poured some black paint into Nick's airbrush and reinforced the shadows. And I hit all the spots I missed with the rattle can. Then I threw some gray paint into my airbrush and turned the PSI down to almost nothing so the paint just spits out and I sprinkle this over everything to start laying down a texture. This will also help to hide the difference between the 3D printed buildings and the flat wooden flooring. After that little rain shower, I turned the PSI on my airbrush back up to normal and gave some areas a light dusting of gray. Now, to finally break out a paintbrush. I put white paint on my palette and took my biggest dry brush and went to town giving everything a good rubbing. This picked out all the details. Now it's painted basically exactly like my old terrain piece. Good old fashioned gray, and I want it to be gray, but I want my second try to be a little more exciting. There's a lot of wiggle room inside of gray. I put some blue transparent ink into my airbrush and lots of water and dusted this all over the vertical pieces. This tints the gray and makes it feel cold, and I did the same thing on the flooring using a dingy yellow. This adds a ton and makes the terrain a lot more interesting while not turning it into a blue and yellow building. Comparing the new to the old, I think the new one has a lot more presence, while well, the old one just has tons and tons of dust from all the different houses I've ever lived in. Now that I've recreated my train piece with my modern knowledge, I want to push it a few steps further. I loaded up my dry brush with gold paint and hit all the windows, dry brushing this on because I don't want to force myself to pick out all of these areas perfectly. Then they would look way too good to be attached to this shabby building. The dry brushing leaves a lot of the primer showing and that's perfect. I hit some of the techie bits with a little metal paint and then made up some rust. I mixed in a little brown to desaturate it and then splashed this all over the model, picking out exhausts, window wells, and broken chunks to highlight. And I made a lot of little drippies. I took a burnt umber ink and put this over the ground, making a little pool and then coming back in with some water to blend it out. The brown and orange looks really good and I think it's because of the warmth I added from the yellow ink in the gold windows, but the blue is getting a little too subtle, so I took some turquoise paint and glazed it over the gold, and that was just the thing it needed. It's coming along. It's looking real lively for a bombed out building, but it needs it needs a little something something. It needs a little extra spice. I think it needs streaking grime. I'm a little nervous to use streaking grime because I'm really bad at oil paints, but streaking grime is an oil paint. I don't know what it is, but apparently it's not. So here goes. Streaking grime says it's enamel on the bottle and I know enamel is what makes my teeth nice and strong. So I've got a good feeling about this. I smeared all the exposed bricks with this stuff. It's a gunky green-brown color, and once I had it on, I have to get it off. I cut some makeup wedges in half and soaked them in a little bit of thinner and got to rubbing. I want to take off a lot of the paint, leaving a dirty tinge and some pools in the recesses. As I rubbed the paint, it started to come off, weirdly down to the black primer, not the base resin. Not quite what I was after. Ten years of painting, and I'm still messing up. 
I don't know what it is with me and oils, but it took the paint right down to the pink and curlies. But that's okay, because the other thing I've learned in 10 years of painting is paint is an additive process, and I can always fix it. I wanted the bricks to have a slightly different look, and I definitely achieved that, but not in the way I planned. I put some gray paint down on my palette and dry burst this over the bricks, bringing them back up in value, and then hitting them again with white paint. All in all, I got what I wanted, a lot of nice texture in the walls. These pieces are interesting, but simple enough that it won't overpower any of my models. Now that is a good old fashioned Warhammer 40,000 gray building. Although it's not that gray, it actually has tons and tons of color, but the overall impression is a very drab and kind of sad looking building. But speaking of sad, as much fun as I've been having over at Nick's desk, touching all the Nick's stuff, I kind of want to go back to my big boy desk with my big boy toys so I can paint the tiniest little things. These are grim dark cherubs, little vet grown babies perfect for spicing up terrain, dioramas, and models, and also part of this month's train set. These little fellas are the perfect thing, whether you need someone to hold up signs, keep an eye on things, or keep the light just where you need it, except no substitutes. I primed them in black and gave them a zenithal from above. This gives some nice contrast and helps me to actually see what's going on in these little tiny models. I picked out the wings with white, about three coats getting them angelic white. And to keep with that angelic theme, I washed them with thin down blue wash. Now for the skin. I mixed a dark beige with blue to desaturate it. These babies are a little on the zombie side, so I don't want them looking too healthy. And I layered this up, highlighting, leaving behind less and less bright paint until they were looking nice and contrasty. Then I glazed a little purple over their skin to make them look a bit more sickly and then wash all their techie bits. I painted their halos gold and then picked out their little baby eye lenses with a red, adding in some highlights and a nice white reflection. I painted up a whole handful of these babies and sprinkled a few of them onto the terrain. These babies are a little like if pigeons were useful, like pigeons with jobs. I sprinkled the remaining cherubs on my space marine models, just in case anyone can't quite hear what the chaplain is saying. His servitor's written it all down. And I have one sitting on the back of my Captain and Terminator armor. It's always great when terrain takes on a little bit of an identity. Like every now and then we'll be setting up a board here at Eon's Battle and it'll be like, we need some more under three inch terrain. Go get the buttholes. <laughs> Cause we made those terrain pieces for uh, last July. And I have a feeling this guy around the studio is gonna be known as the baby building. Weirdly, these two pieces actually do feel the same to me. I remember one day on a whim slapping this guy together and kind of the same thing on a whim slapping this guy together. It took a lot of prep work, but uh, they like it does feel like two different eras of my hobby journey. High school Jay and now. And actually, one thing I have a problem with is really appreciating my battlefields, especially because I'm getting a little bit more competitive my old age. I feel like even though this does kind of just look like popsicle sticks and fun foam, it felt like a big epic story to me in high school. Our games were like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or Pee Wee's Big Adventure, just these giant epic conflicts where I think sometimes I get lost. I, it's almost like I'm playing tabletop simulator in real life, just pushing tokens around and rolling dice. But sometimes you got to take a step back and really just look at how awesome all this stuff is at all of the little cherubs in sand and gravel and just how epic. It's like you're making a diorama, but then you get to play a game inside of it. It's like your imagination to come to life. And it really helps to be lost in the enjoyment and the narrative of a tabletop war game, especially when you're losing as hard as I am. This terrain is available on our Patreon for the month of March. And if you want to know that it is in fact your own skills and not the terrain's fault of why you're always losing games, it is the perfect thing. Thanks for watching.